I think the, the beauty of, of the so-called pigeonhole called academic work is that he didn't, he didn't stick to the box. He went beyond the box. He was not his professor sitting in his office. He went out, he got involved because he saw the future of uh, Ukrainian academics in this whole campus as having to have a route somewhere. You can't simply start pulling kids off the street as soon as they hit the campus uh, cement and say, here, you're going to take Ukrainian courses. So when it came time to seeing how to get that bilingual program going in Lamont, or in Sherwood Park, or in anywhere else, he wasn't looking at them as simply language students. He was looking at them as future potential students of his own. And so he did definitely did not sit within the hallowed halls or, or within the, the uh, somewhat cluttered uh, uh, confines of his office. He went out and got things done. And, and so in terms of uh, his academic work, it went way beyond the academy. I know he took a sabbatical, a partial sabbatical, I believe, one year, and was interested in, in, with the purpose of uh, increasing enrollment or developing the Ukrainian bilingual program. So it wasn't just something that was in uh, the city of Edmonton, but beyond. So he started going out and visiting school superintendents. I know he went to Grand Prairie, and I think Olenka Bilash made a, made a trip with him at that time when she was uh, looking after the resource center at the Canadian Institute, which had just been developed. Uh, and I went eat with him east to the uh, county of Lamont. Uh, we went out to uh, the county of Two Hills and the county of Minburn, which was in Vagreville. And, uh, well, we started off in, in, in Vagreville, uh, sort of getting the, trying to get the program going. I, we had uh, Irka Sharabun with us, and I remember that the two of us were sitting there in, a, in an elementary school, um, basically phoning parents that we got the list from. Fortunately, again, they, 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 it's just a sort of confluence of events being in the right place at the right time. I know that the bilingual program, that the people who uh, were instrumental in getting the, the uh, bilingual program to be approved and the legislation to be modified for it are, are also acknowledged by our uh, francophone br uh, brethren, I guess, and, and sisters too, uh, brothers and sisters, in the sense that until that legislation was changed, even French could not be taught for more than uh, after school or a period or, or a period a week or something. So the fact that it, it was the Ukrainian activi community activists that got the, le the legislation changed also enabled French immersion to exist and Francophone education to exist because they would not have had that legal basis otherwise. Так як і професор Медвідський, я є іммігрантом в цій країні. Ми зустрілися спочатку, він казав, то ти так, як і я, іммігрант. І коли я приїхав до жити до Едмонтону, це що в минулому столітті було, то ми познайомилися і тоді після того я пішов вчитися на українську фольклорну програму тут в університеті. Він мені дуже багато допоміг. І не тільки допоміг в тому плані, щоб допомагав з порадами, а також допоміг мені засвоїтися тут в Едмонтоні. Що я йому безмежно вдячний за це і буду пам'ятати про це, думаю, до кінця життя. Uh, the Village Association goes back to um, a time when a, a gentleman that I used to see in church, kind of in the back corner, uh, pulled up in front of my house, which wasn't too far away from church one evening. Rolled down the window and said, Dobry večer. <laughs> Я хочу з вами може трохи про що говорити. And so I thought, well, this is kind of strange. And then he opened the door and let it swing open. And sat, we sat there and had our initial conversation, initial meeting. Of, uh, he introduced himself and pointed out. Uh, Oh, some mutual interest that we did have, and of course he was aware of the village and was quite interested in the village as a, 
as an outlet for um, folkloric, ethnographic uh, research. Um, and of course had his own aspirations developing at that particular time in seeing some form of a center developed in Edmonton at the University of Alberta. And from then uh, things kept on going. Uh, there was an advisory board created from the onset, a uh, ministerial advisory board for the village and um, I used to be invited uh, on a pretty regular basis to the meetings and at there, there at one meeting was Dr. Medvitsky as a as an appointed member and uh, that was especially good because he was able to um, really push the need for having a strong research uh, perspective attached to the village and to its presentations uh, the idea that the authenticity had to be backed up the word authenticity had to be backed by serious scholarly level research when I was working on graduate degrees in Ukrainian folklore at the University of Alberta, I learned that there was much more to Newfoundland than just lots of fish and harsh climate. The province's largest university has one of the biggest and most reputable folklore programs in the world. I could have never thought that I would end up teaching here. I can picture Dr. Medvitsky's wry smile and him saying, See? And you thought that it would be impossible to find a good academic job with a PhD in Ukrainian folklore. He was pleased that my long-term anxiety about job, job prospects, an anxiety that many graduate students share, um, had a positive resolution. It is Dr. Medvitsky's fault that I now have to dig through the Newfoundland snow and uh, suffer those bone-chilling Atlantic winds, but I want him to know that I'm not too upset about it. Одним словом, два слова, як любить висловлюватися доктор Медвіцький. Все, чому він мене навчив, допомагає не лише професійно розвиватися, але й жити. Особливо, коли в моменти, коли життєві хмари згущуються, на згадку приходять його облюбовані народні перли. На зразок не переживайте, якось буде. Ще так не було, щоб якось не було. Some of his money was quite, of course, going to this institution, and, and if it wasn't money, then it was his resources. Of course, uh, we're reminded of that every time we come to the library here at the center, because it's not just his library, it's his personal collection that created that library. And uh, that took a concerted effort, too. The books didn't come flying to him. He searched them out. And they are sometimes some of the most valuable and rarest books on topics that you can find anywhere sitting here in Edmonton. The value of, of what he has collected I think is very, very far from being recognized. It's, if anything, what he has done is he has salvaged, he's brought it together, he's, he's created a resource which is still only becoming known now and will become valuable to people with each succeeding generation. You know, it's a, it's a broad, it's a beautiful field. I he, folklore. He, he gave a prostir folklore для розбудови, and Andrejko, you are building it, you are widening that prostir folklore. It's so very much important. Folklore will be always, always popular. Since antiquity, folklore is it. Because in folklore, it's our butya. It's our existence. So it's... Butya. 
folklore je buď a tím to that conclusion.